This is the new city catechism question number 22. Question. Why must the Redeemer be truly human? Answer. That in human nature he might, on our behalf, perfectly obey the whole law and suffer the punishment for human sin. And also so that he might sympathize with our weaknesses. And the scripture comes from Hebrews chapter 2 verse 17. Therefore he had to be made like his brothers in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. In question 22 of the Catechism, the Catechism focuses on the humanity of Jesus Christ. And the humanity of Jesus Christ is absolutely essential for the Christian faith. It was absolutely essential that Jesus assumed human nature. Now there were some groups of people, of false teachers, in biblical times, in the New Testament times, that denied that Jesus was a human. Although we almost never face that heresy in the church in Canada or North America at all in the times we're dealing with now. But this group that was around during the biblical times, the New Testament times, were called Docetists, and they preached Docetism. This was the belief that Jesus only appeared to be human. He was a super God or a super being that he only appeared to be human. And this comes to light in the first letter that John writes, 1 John 4, verses 2 to 3, it says, Every spirit that confesses that Jesus has come in the flesh is from God, but every spirit that confesses that Jesus has not come in the flesh is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. This was such a horrible belief that John pulls out the full throttle and calls Anyone who denies that Jesus is fully human, assumed human nature, they are the Antichrist. They are against Christ. Jesus had to assume human nature for four reasons. Number one, Jesus became human so that he could be the representative of all humanity. We see the contrast between Adam, who is our sinful representative, with Jesus Christ, who is the perfect human representative. We see this in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45 to 47, where there's this contrast between the first Adam, Adam, and the second Adam, Jesus Christ. We also see this contrast in Romans chapter 5, verses 12 to 21, where we have the first Adam did this, the second Adam did this. We have this comparison between Adam, the first man, and the second Adam, who gives life and who brings salvation to humanity. So Jesus had to assume human nature to be our representative. Number two, Jesus had to become human and assume human nature to be the perfect sacrifice for sinners. We see this in Hebrews 2 verse 17. Jesus had to be made human so that he might be that merciful, and faithful high priest to make propitiation for sins. Jesus had to assume this human nature so that he could live this perfect life, be our representative, and thus sacrifice and pay the punishment for the sins of God's people. Jesus had to be human to bear the wrath of God on the cross. Number three, Jesus had to assume human nature to be an example to humanity, to people. In 1 John 2 verse 6, John writes, We ought to walk as Jesus walked. Jesus comes and is that example of how we are to live, and we are to follow the example of Jesus Christ. We're to walk as he walked. And number four, Jesus assumed human nature... And because of that, we, he is able to sympathize with our weaknesses. In Hebrews 2.18, it says that Jesus was tested. He's able to help those who are being tempted. Hebrews 4.15-16, to 16, 
Jesus is able to sympathize with our weaknesses. Yet, Jesus was without sin. Jesus knows the temptations. Jesus knows the struggles. And yet, he prevailed without sin. But yet, he is still able to sympathize with us. We have a Savior who can sympathize with everything that we faced. Here we see the beauty of Christ, his perfection, but also his service to humanity by going to the cross and bearing the punishment of sin. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks for watching, and God bless.